Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today we will be diving into a fairly new application called Height. Um, I wanted to go over all of the details and a little bit more about it. It's more of a team task management application uh, used for collaborating with others, um, trying to take on the project management space, but in a lighter fashion. Um, so we're going to go into it a bit more detail. Um, you can use the timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to a specific section. Now, before we begin, if you want to check out some of the medium writing um, that I'm doing at the moment, you can check the link in the description and get access to a ton of other medium content there if you fancy. So, folks, um, Height is quite an interesting one because it actually was on my radar a little bit of time before um, it uh, released publicly. And that's because I think I saw the preview page and I was like, wow, this is a very well designed application. But they're actually released to the public and now they have $14 million um, in their, their funding. Um, and their sort of goal is sort of twofold. What they want to do is help to centralize. Um, the sort of work that companies do because they believe that it's sort of disjointed in the sense that you know the example here they, they say that product engineering might use Jira, marketing might use Asana, design might use paper. They want to try to blend all of those into height. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, and uh, you can see here as well um, that they've had a few launch companies uh, to go and they're only a team of nine which I was pretty shocked at uh, but uh, very good, good kudos to them because that must be uh, a lot of work in the moment. So uh, again, this is what I saw on their website originally. Their pricing is free. You have unlimited members, unlimited tasks, and up to 10 lists and six custom attributes. So really more for a sort of a, a personal or, or two sort of two or three people team. Um, however, they've got a $6.99 uh, per member per month uh, for unlimited access to the majority of it, including a custom domain. Um, this is billed annually, so their monthly pricing would be $850, which is on sort of par with the other applications, maybe a tad cheaper, um, but again, you would get access to a much more sort of access um, when you're going on that plan there. So it really touts itself as this sort of visual uh, project manager, so you can change the spreadsheets, Kanban, calendar, and they've got a lot of focus on the chat functionality as well. So as you can see here, this is the Mac version. I believe it does come up on desktop. Not sure about the mobile, but include it below. But you can see here, this is my workspace. And one thing first off is this application's designed really, really well. They've put a huge attention to detail into the small gestures, small sounds and animations in this app. Now, functionality, um, as you can see on this left-hand panel, you have inbox, all of the sort of assigned created to me, stuff that you'd expect in a project manager. You can create lists and start adding tasks to them. So I've started adding some tasks here. It's really easy to create a task. You press C and you can start adding the task, including description, uh, and you can start assigning it to people. Remember, this is primarily a team experience. So as you can imagine, this is where the sort of detailed functionality in the smart list, what we'll talk about later, will come in context. So you can see here that I've got statuses. I can choose which statuses and I can configure them later. I'll show you them in settings. The sort of regular ones, I, I like this one, won't do, pretty sort of obvious. But you can also search for a parent task, which is quite nice. Something you don't see in some of the other project management applications. And I also like the fact that you can add priority and sprint as well, which is nice for design teams. Now, this is where the attributes comes in. You only get six of them. They're sort of like custom fields. But as you can see, you can add a few here, um, but there are more um, in which I'll show you in a moment. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go ahead and create it. And you can see here that it pops down below here. And much like a spreadsheet, very similar to sort of Zenkit vibes, you can see here that I can modify things like lists. You can make this part of more lists, including things like the backlog area, private tasks, which is pretty helpful if you've got your own uh, sort of stuff to do, and general as well. Uh, which is a general channel. Uh, and you can see here that you can apply it to subtasks as well. So you can add some more lists and you can add it to a sprint and they make some pre-suggestions um, for you. I'm guessing it based on a sprint is a week long. And you can see here that you can add it to a sprint automatically and you can give it a priority. 
Now up in the top right corner, this is where you can add more of those attributes and they've got a few created for you, much like you would expect in applications like Notion, Monday and ClickUp. And you can see here, there's anything like due date and uh, you can see sort of giving a due date to uh, something, so select next week um, and you can see that it's given itself a task. Now this is where the real sort of magic comes in with the list side of stuff in the top right hand corner you can see that spreadsheets it's currently giving me sort of like a custom spreadsheet with the things that I've added in columns but I can remove what I want uh, what I find suitable I can add certain attributes and I can really go granular on how it's sorted and also how it's sectioned up at the moment I've sectioned it up through sprint but it, I could change that to priority so you can see here that I can see high priority at the top, medium, and ones that have no uh, associated priority. Uh, so, but it's weird because down here I actually have one that is given uh, a associated priority. So I don't know whether that's a bug, um, but I can hide that section if I want to. And I can add more tasks down here. Now you can configure things down here so that you see it's a bit like a Notion database to some extent. And I can check in with my filters down here. Uh, and, and I can modify that as well as sharing it with other people. Stuff you'd expect inside of these applications. Now in the inbox, anything that lands in that you've been invited to will appear. And you can also set favorites as well. So this one has been favorited and you can do that in the top right hand corner up here. You can also write it a nice description to clear it, sort of differentiate it from other tasks. And you can set yourself private tasks as well. Now, one thing I like is when you create a new list, you can actually set up these lovely icons. There's over 10,000 icons. You can also create a smart list as well, um, which helps you to combine lists and create reports. So it's a bit more of a sort of saved search function right there. You can also browse all. So you can search all of your lists if you've got tons of them, past projects and even users if you want to. And you can see here that uh, I can go to any of the ones or search or even create a new one from up there. Now, one thing I really liked is the command bar. Command K is how you access it. And for example, let's say I was inside of that, um, this one here, and I'm hovering over a task. I can quickly press command K and I can do a range of different things, including everything from copying the task ID and all that sort of jazz, but there's so much, it's actually probably too much to get into this video, but I could actually do, for example, I could be like, okay, edit, and uh, I could type in edit sprint, and you can see there I can modify the sprint, so I might move that a little bit more forward. Um, so you can do more and more to it if you want to, um, and uh, as you can see here, let's just uh, have a little gander at some of them. Um, you can uh, edit the priority, um, and you can even edit the block blocked by uh, and find out what tasks are specifically being blocked by other people. Now, the, the, the spreadsheet feature isn't just the only view you get. You get Kanban view as well. So this looks quite nice. Um, got that sort of Trello-y, um, the Zenkit vibe, and also calendar view to be able to see that visually in front of you. You can also uh, go in a bit more detail like show weekends and all of the regular stuff you'd expect inside of this view. So three views, very basic to compare to some of the other more advanced ones. But what I think they're doing is they're trying to keep it fairly simple as they start to release new additions. So I quite like the way they've done this. And I would have to say one of the best abilities in this is opening up a task because you can see the level of detail um, in each task and I quite like how it, it keeps quite fixed. You can add more attributes and description and even add a subtask. And this is where the magic happens for teams. You can go into a full editor here. Uh, I believe it does markdown. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'll double check on that one, but you can also have it in preview. Um, and as you can imagine, you can add files and emoji as well and send them through there. You can also check whether you're subscribed to certain conversations, which is quite nice. Um, and um, you can see here that, uh, uh, well, I was going to show you something. Other, I was going to show you something else is actually the ticking off. So if I went into this uh, spreadsheet view, so I'm about to tick off a task. And to be honest, it's like a really nice experience for ticking off a task. I know it's a very small detail, but let's here we go. It's really nice. Like it, the, it feels like it's done now. Um, and uh, what's really nice is if I were to accidentally undo that, I can undo that very fast. And as you can see, um, it's now back in the system. 
So I really like this. You can move certain sections around if you don't find it suitable. Um, and um, I'm gonna show you the settings. So the settings, you can add actually more areas if you want to. You can actually reduce the areas if you want to as well to keep it cleaner. And you can access the command bar here. But the settings is quite interesting because you can change the preferences, including show task IDs, show list names, and really modify the colors and uh, some of the task layouts. You can also change the notifications and really learn the keyboard shortcuts. There are so many to learn. Oh, there's a sound effects one. There we go. You can make sure if you didn't really like that, you can turn it off. You can change it to dark theme if you want to um, using those. And um, you can really go uh, really quite cool in the visualizations. So it's worth learning if you really get into it. This is where the attributes elements come in. You can see the blocked by um, attributes and the Judah attributes. And also you can modify what colors in very high level of details of what the different status is and new status is and what they include, as well as sprints. So you can cut, customize all your sprints here and also set up group mentions. So you want specific departments to be mentioned, forms as well. And what I like is the integration sections. This is really nice if you've got something like Slab connected up, you can actually have Slab previews appear on it. And inside of Slab, you can have the tasks that are commonly associated to it uh, connected up. You could do that with Slack. It just, I don't think it looks as good from what I uh, first saw in the preview. You can do some Zapier integrations, Zapier, sorry, and Google Sheets as well. They've got an API already, which is good news, and you can import from Jira and CSV. And as you can see, you can really go into detail on the side of authentication uh, and, and some of the more detailed authentications comes from when you're using the enterprise plan. So that's a little bit of an overview of this application. I'm not going into too much detail here, but I'm, I'm fairly impressed with the design as an application. Again, it's going against the grain of a typical application because at the moment project management is being very visually uh, led in terms of um, you know very uh, different sort of dashboards reporting and a lot of people do like that however this is sort of going back to basics in making it very simplistic with not much sort of fluff uh, but a very nice design and very task management focus which a lot of people might quite like. So this application is now publicly released. Uh, they've got a really impressive website that sort of overviews all of the features in more detail as actually well as uh, some of the workflow elements. So they show you how sprint planning can do and you can demonstrate it live. And look, I mean, even better, uh, <laughs> even better than how I can do it um, on there. I don't do sprint planning, but you can see some of the demonstrations of how a sprint uh, could look and also working with clients and how uh, they can collaborate and interact with certain pages as well as things like product launches. So they've got quite an interesting setup with the whole um, demonstrations on the website and here's that Slack integration. So not as say in depth as uh, I say the Slab one. Slab, where are you? Um, but as you can imagine, um, obviously some other APIs limit them on how they do. And one thing I really liked in the application, I'm telling you the, the attention to detail in the app is I'm telling you the intention to detail in the app is really nice. You can go and uh, you can see here, if you click about us, I really like just how uh, much attention uh, they put on the sort of animations in this application. It's really nice. Um, so overall, this application is a pretty interesting app if your team looking to sort of focus on their task management. Um, I probably see this more suitable with designers and engineers because I feel it fits best to how they plan and organize, but I can't see it being a bad bet for anyone in marketing and sales or any other team uh, that sort of needs a good project manager. So that's an overview of this application. Hopefully you found it helpful and we'll keep an eye on height as we make more videos. Also, one thing I did zoom in as well. This is what it probably looks like in about 100% view. I just pressed zoom in because I didn't have many tasks and I wanted you to see the all gorgeous layout of this application. Anyway, folks, a big thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will talk to you all very soon. Make sure to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it and comment with some of your opinions on height. Cheerio, folks.